what you came here for today is to get some education from Mr. Jorge Perez. So Jorge is a bilingual Puerto Rico-based stylist who works behind the chair. He's a salon owner of Hair Lab 407. He's a Sam ambassador. He's a Redken artist, super passionate hairdresser, especially about short hair cutting, finishing, and cutting and, and color. He's got a super artistic approach, and I think you all are going to be incredibly inspired by this man. So please welcome in the chats, Mr. Jorge Perez. Yeah. The fireworks. We're still working on that part of the fireworks that might come out. Yeah, but man. That's they in don't the have that stream yard yet. I don't know what's going on. All right, I'm going to get out of your hair. You go after it, buddy. See you soon. Well, hi, guys. Jorge Perez, straight from Puerto Rico. Give me, sending you mad love. Hope you guys are doing great. How's an awesome, awesome day? Let's start the weekend right. I mean, start the week right. The weekend just passed. So let's start the week right. Okay. So we're going to start a uh, PC cut. Um, one of the things I like to enjoy is like prepping the hair. So one of my favorite tools is right here. So we flip it. This is an excellent product. My Redken, when, when United, I'm just going to miss it again because I missed it earlier. And it... Uh, Dry it up a bit. So this is the perfect cutting lotion to work with. Um, so we're going to start today with a center section right in here in the back. This is where we're going to start cutting. But you can also see we have a diagonal forward, kind of like a triangle shape. Let me show it this way. As you can see, a triangle shape just to take the nape away from the top of the head. We'll work on up, but let's go piece by piece so you guys get it. Okay. So I'm going to start in the back. I'm going to use clips to isolate the areas that we are not um, working. Hi, Juan. What? Hi, Juan. Ma. And ni I can't words. Oh, I'm so sorry. Between Spanish and English. Um, neat. Um, hope you guys are doing well. So, like I mentioned, we're going to do a center section. As you can see, I'm using my Sanvila white comb so you could better see the contrast. So, this hair. We're not going to be working with it. I'm just going to clip it away. Same thing on the other side. This hair, I am not cut, cutting it, not going to be using it. I'm just going to clip it away. I'm using my favorite clips, my sample of dry clips, so they can hold. But I'm working on not wet hair, kind of humid hair, so I could have more control and you guys can see the sections. Okay, let me see. Let me flip it here to the side. Bam. Hope you guys can see better. So here's my center section. Let me move it around so you guys can see it better. Here's the center profile section. There you go. Hola, Boricua. So I got my section and I'm putting my fingers in, a, as you can see, from the bottom up, but I'm also giving it an angle so I could go from from short to long down to the bottom. So our first cut, turn it here, and we'll start releasing. Now, every time you get an opportunity, I um, mean, you have the whole hair, hair held in your hands, you're gonna continue chopping it off, and you could move your fingers downward just so you could uh, maintain control of the section. So as you see, I already cut my sections very short, right? And let me flip it back so you guys could see it. It's coming, like I mentioned, very short. From sh from short to long, have that control, that diagonal section right there. Now our second section, we're going to take care of the hair that we had. We place this right here. Now you're going to take a diagonal section from this piece right here. Click this. There we go. Now take our second section. Now what we're doing is pivoting each section. So we start at the center. Our second section would be here. Our third section would be up here. Okay? Same thing will, we, will be repeated on the other side. The hair that we don't want, that we're not using or we're not cutting at the moment, we're just going to clip it away. Make sure it's out of the way. Now we're going to use our longest part. That will be this hair right here. Our longest part, and we're going to use it as a guide so we can start cutting. So let me flip it to the side a bit. Bring it 
here, gather it all together. I will maintain the same angle of my hand. Let me see if I can put it this way so you guys can see it more. See the angle? I'm maintaining the same angle and I'm keeping my knuckles close to the head and my fingers away from the head. So I'm creating that nape kind of shape that would be um, longer to the top, shorter to the, to the neck. And I will have my fingers in that 45 degree angle. Okay, so I'm picking it up again, giving that 45 degree angle. I hope you guys can see it there better. And I'm releasing as my knuckles are closest to the neck. As my knuckles are closer to the to the neck, that gives me that perfect angle of long to short. So a little piece got out there and I didn't cut it. So I'll just cut it here for you. Last section. Here you go. I'm going to elevate it. Give it that same position, that 45 degree angle closest to the, my knuckles close to the neck. Now this one I'm going to change. Let me see if I can put it in a better position for you guys to see. Uh, here we go. Um, I have it that my knuckles close to the neck and my fingers away from the bottom of the crown. Here I come in. Pick it up again, make it go close. And there we go. Now, one thing I like to do when sometimes we have different angles and shapes of the head, let's work a little bit uh, a little bit funner. So let's try to change our shear and we'll use our blending shear. I'm using my Sambila Invisiblend. And I'm going to shift it aside so I could see equally. I'm in a, probably in a body in an odd position, but it's just in your favor so you guys could see it. Okay, so you come in and you just start blending those ends. Sometimes when we have a little angle or a certain disconnection, we need to blend it in a little bit softer just to create that softness. I'm not saying go way inside the head. I'm just saying... If you could see the, the, the length that you have, just try to go on the third. Instead of having half, go to the third so those ends could still go soft and they will fall in easier. So what I like to do after that, from the angle I had, I come in and I blend them in softly and I comb it back. This is very important, combing back after you cut it's very good when you comb it back so you can actually see the shape that you're creating. Sometimes we just cut and we forget. Just adjust the, the, the cut to the position that you want it to be so you can actually see how the hair, how, how the cut is shaping out. And you will have, you will be like cutting with intent or purpose and you will be seeing um, what, what your end result will be coming to. So I'm flipping on uh, to the second side, jumping back to my shear, as I love my seven inch dry cutting shear for lefties. Let me see in the chat, let me, let me know how many lefties are here today. I wanna see that. So as you can see, um, there we go. I'm shifting a bit right, using that diagonal section. So I'm coming here from that corner, go up. This is the hair that I am not touching. So I'm gonna take my clip, isolate this area. There we go. I almost broke her neck, but I didn't. So here we go. I'm, this is a better angle for you guys to see. See my hand is in a 45 degree angle. I'm slightly shifting that section to a little bit back to the, my previous section. So I come in here from the bottom up so I could see better. Take that piece of hair that hasn't been cut, bring it up. Now, instead of my knuckles being close to the neck, now my fingers are the ones that are closer to the neck. So that can still maintain the same movement. And as you can see, that 45 um, angle is right there. So I cut it off. 
go a little bit inward and maintain those finger my fingers very close to the to the neck if you're touching them that means you're in the right you hit you hit the spot as you can see see this movement right here where it comes it's doing this this exactly this why because your finger angle is giving that 45 degree now last section from the nape let's release it let's put this clip away comb it through let's shift it a little bit so you guys can see it better let me move this hair out of the way perfect now i have it here my last section put my my knuckles away from the bottom of the crown but my fingers are going to be headed towards towards the neck that means as close as i get to the neck my fingers my nails will be touching the neck so that is very important to maintain um your your finger on this i mean you come away i cut grab my second set subsection come in my nails or fingers close to the neck my knuckles away from the bottom crown and there we go now what do we do bring back your 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 blending shear or your invisiblend give it that angle let me just shift it here hope you guys could see better i'm maintaining the same angle that i'm going to blend in with my blend shears now one hot tip have you guys have fit have you guys seen that this shear you can flip it and you can flip it that means you have to take advantage of what your um shear does so one thing uh along the years i've discovered is where do i want the hair to be okay what i mean what do i want the hair to be is when i'm cutting what do i want the hair to do when i'm using my blending shears what oh sorry i'm, I'm reading in my head so there's a question do you point the blending shear up or down that's where i'm getting to thanks for the question okay so what i'm doing is the side of the blade that is um, not the ones with the with the blendings, you know, the solid one. The solid one is going to be on the side that you're pushing your hair to. So that means if I want the hair to flip, in this case, if I wanted the hair to flip up, the, bl the blade must be in the bottom. In this case, that the hair wants to flip down, I want the blade to be on top. So that means that when I am cutting, I am pushing, I'm adjusting the hair to fold inward instead of outward. So that means if the blending shear is up and I'm coming with the blending shear, let me flip it here. If I'm with the blending shear cutting upward with the solid blade up, that means the hair will tend to flip upward instead of downward. Hope you guys got that. I'm not actually elevating that much. I'm just doing like a scissor over comb technique but I'm maintaining my 45 degree angle. That means I'm coming from the shortest point to the longest point, but I'm only, if this would be the strand, I'm just cutting a third, the blending shear would be at its third point, like right here. If this would be the full strand, I'll be cutting my blending shear just up to here. So I'll bring it in, flip it, because I want it to be the solid blade downward, and that's where I'll be cutting. As same as I was doing a scissor over a comb. And there we go. After I cut it, I just adjust it to where I want that hair to fold. See, as you can see, it's just right there. Come back here at the center. And just a third, not go in too deep. The deeper you go, then you'll start creating like a lots of spots because the hair is short. And remember, guys, if the hair if the hair is short, the shorter hair will push up or move the longest strand. So that means if you're blending and you just want to create softness, don't go in too deep. Just try to maintain yourself on from the half of the length outward, and that would be awesome. Oh yeah. I'm just reading questions. Uh, so I was saying, thank you for, es muy contento de ser un boricua izquierdo y aquí compartiendo con ustedes. So I just had to give props to my Latinos, my Puerto Ricans. 
I got to show them all the love all the time. So as you can see, the shape is coming in. See how it shapes out? It curves in perfectly. Now let's go to our second section that will be this right here. Let me take this clip out. Put my shears here for a second. That stuck. There we go. This section, I'm going to be working with this section, so I'm just going to lower. Now I'm going to lower a bit the mannequin. So I'm going to be working on a higher point, and I guess hope this works for you guys. So here is my section. I'm combing it. There we go. Just to maintain that cleanness here. So you can see the length that's already been here. And I'm jumping back to my favorite tool, the Sam Vila Classic Shape, 7-inch dry. Okay, let me shift it here a bit for you guys so you guys can see it. I'm going to adjust my body, use the, the computer so I can see. So we're going to divide this in three sections. We're going to repeat the movement. That means we're cutting here, we're cutting here, and we're cutting here. Okay? So our first section goes straight down, not diagonal yet. Bring it here, take my clip, like I always like to say, if you're not cutting it, keep it out of the way. There we go. So back to this point. So what would be my guideline to maintain that connection? It would be the last point of what I cut. So I bring it here in a 45 degree angle as I have it here. Make sure, this is one on another good tip. Try to bring your comb close into the scalp and just push it outward. And when you have it to the point where you want, as you can see, see how it's coming out? The same shape you want. So I have it here. I come from the bottom up. I reorganize the shape that I want, bring it here, put it to the point where I want, and I continue cutting. Now, I got that cut. Now I'm going to comb it through. As you can see, see the shape that it's already coming to? I really enjoy short hair cutting. I think it's so fun. And also, at the same time, it also pops out a lot of what your clients are like, oh, I want to look this, I want to look that. Don't, don't hesitate. Talk to them about them. It's a huge change that clients will always love. Clients will always enjoy something new. And never forget, you got to offer this to your clients. Like, okay, look, I got this. What do you guys think? Uh, what do you want to look different? And my clients always fall for that. And I want you guys, your clients to fall for it too. So I'm in my second section, diagonal forward, bring it back. I'm starting from the bottom, as I mentioned. See my connection right here? That's where I'll cut. So I'm slightly pivoting that section. Bring it in upward. So there we go. After I cut it, I comb it through to see how it's fake, how it's shaping out. See, it continues that beautiful movement. A little hair that didn't belong there. My last section, here we go, on the top back. So I am combing it. Let me get this out of the way because this is interrupting me. There we go. Now I'm going to bring the section, see my low point right here. At this point right here, my guideline, that's where it's going to start. And I'm going to cut it away. Move it upward. That little belly that you see that doesn't work there, you eliminate it. Bring the section again. And there we go. After you cut it, comb it through. Make sure it's falling to where you want. Now, another hot tip. Sometimes I was cutting very boldly and I was like giving it that shape. So let's blend it in. Let's repeat what we had. So we're using, back again, our blending sheet. So I start at the center, 
comb out what I don't want. I'm going to stand behind it. I got a yellow shirt so you guys can see it better. I'm going to make three cuts. One, two, three. One thing I've uh, we, we should figure out is how many maintain a consistency of where we're blending. The longer the hair, let's make it, let's be conscious of what we're doing and what, why we're doing it. Second section right here. If I did three on the first, I will repeat it. Sometimes we go, ah, oh, we, we get fall, we get too passionate and we're like, ah, oh, cutting it all out, right? But what happens when you do four cuts, six cuts, two cuts, three cuts, you don't have a consistency of the shape. So if you don't have a consistency of the shape, what would happen? You would have different movements and different textures and different uh, densities in each area. So if you maintain a pattern when you're blending or you're softening, this will actually really help you at the end of the result. So again, I cut, I bring it all together. I do one, push my fingers a little bit outward, two, three, and then I put it back where it belongs. Always respecting where the hair lives. As you can see, that shape is still continuing to fall in. Last section, you bring it, go three again, one, two, three, comb it in, shake it, twirl it to see how it starts falling in. If you love it, you got it. Or hey, hey Andrew, how, back. how deep do you usually go for that first cut? Like, where do you establish that first point that you're going to um, cut in with the blending shear? Okay, as I was mentioning, let me bring it back. Thank you for that question, Andrew. Um, I never like to go in. I like to place my fingers. Let me see if I can pick up my fingers. There we go. I hope you guys can see it there. I like to place it right in the middle. I don't want to go in deep. So I want to go from the mid outward. That means I will give my three cuts outward. Can I pivot from them? Yes, I can. Do I want to do them straight? That means if I do them straight, the ones in the bottom are getting the ones less um, texturized and the longer ones will have a more movement. That's uh, the way I sometimes do it, but you have to find your own way what works for you and the client that you're working with. Why? All hairs are not the same. They have different textures. They have different um, patterns. So you have to figure out what works for you and your client. Um, with my client, the one that I'm working, this is a mannequin here. So she has very easy, um, fluid hair. But when, sometimes when you're working with a client, the hair texture is so different. And sometimes you could do the same cut three, four times, and none of the cuts will look the same. Why? because all the, all the hair structures of every client that you have is not repeatedly the same. So you have to understand when we're doing this is trying to find what would be the perfect point where should I cut it? Something that worked big for me is that I started not going deep inside the hair shaft or inside the, like, inside the hair shaft going deep to cut it because there are her hairs that had different patterns. So if they had different patterns, um, or they have a callet or something inside, or they're like some hairs grow this way, then the other pattern grows. So you have to figure out what works for you and what works when you're cutting. To me, like I mentioned, I like to go from the half outward or just a third of the hair. That would usually, um, for me, work. So I'm just sharing this one with you. So let's do the other side. Let me flip it. There we go. Bring it here. Let's take away, use back to our seven inch dry cutting shear. Like I said, let's keep it classic. Got it here. So uh, comb this to the side, diagonal section. That means something if you might be asking, how many sections do we have? So we have one in the center, one diagonal, one less. So this is the center one. I'm going with this one that's slightly diagonal, 45 angle, and this is way much um, uh, to the left. Now, this last session, like I mentioned, we're going to slightly over direct it, but you'll see it in a minute when I'm doing it. 
taking the piece of hair that I don't want. Let's clip it outward. I'm jumping in here. I'm taking my comb. Sorry that I'm putting the elbow. I'm just trying to find my angle. There we go, 45 degrees. There we go, we got it. There we go, we have it. Sorry for putting the elbow, I'm a left-handed, my bad. So here we go from top to bottom. That little piece, I didn't go, I didn't cut it because I couldn't, is that this is the piece that where it connects. So I'm again elevating. Here's the hair that I already cut prior from the bottom section and this is a piece. So I want to be very sure that I am maintaining the same pattern. You see how you see it comes out? Beautiful. Last section. I drop it. There we go. Now I'm taking my comb. I'm elevating my elbow so you guys can see a little bit better. Go ahead, what, Andrew. Um, what, uh, what fabrics would you use this haircut on? Would you use it on curly hair, finer hair, thicker hair? Okay. I have done it on a lot of different textures, right? And if I've done it on a lot, a lot of different textures, I started tweaking this technique on how to adjust uh, the sectionings. Or what, what do, do I need to make a finer section? Do I need to make thinner sections? These are things that you start understanding when you start understanding the fabric of hair. And this is something it took me a while to learn was understanding the word, the fabric of that means I know most of you probably do laundry as I do. So understanding, would you um, wash in each cycle or there's certain pieces uh, of your in your closet that you wouldn't throw inside the washer, you just take it to, to the laundry so they could really um, take care of it. So this is the same way of hair. You have to understand the fabric that you're working in or how you're um, working it with. Uh, what I mean by this is you have to understand if you need finer sections, you need thinner sections. Do you need to leave pieces longer? Do you need to leave pieces shorter? Let's say if this was um, curled hair. Okay, you could stretch it to cut it, but it means when you stretch the hair to cut it, what would happen? It's a curled hair, so that means it's going to fall back in. So one tip that I could share with you if you're doing this cut on, on wave your curly hair, after you stretch it, push it back. What I'm saying is, on this angle, there we go. If I am cutting it here, this is where I mean straight, take the hair and push it back to a point where um, the hair will have that movement by itself. And when you release it, it's cut and it's not going to shrink in. Because remember, the hair is wet and damp. And when the hair is wet and, tamp and damp, what happens? The hair stretches a little bit longer. So that means when it falls back in, that means you still have that control and you can still see the length. When you do it on curly hair, try to play with a little longer set. When it's probably this type of hair, more um, loose hair or straight hair, you can go with for those comfortable. What you cut is what you get. Hope that I answered that question for you guys. So here again, my body position is not in the right place, but I'm doing this for you guys so you guys can see it better. As you can see, there's my guide coming from the bottom up. There we go, from the bottom up. Cut that little piece that wasn't beautiful. Now we got it right. Thank God, thanks for that. I love your words. So I'm bringing back my shear, my blending shear, and I'm gonna repeat the same movement. Now you come in on, like I said, the third, on the third of the length. My blending shear, the, the hard blade, is actually on top because what do I want the hair to do? When it cuts, it will fold inward. So after I cut, like I said, always put the hair back. So you can see what you're doing. You can actually see, oh, probably I need a little bit a little more snips here. I need a little, little, little uh, snips there. 
I come up sometimes vertically again, watch. And then I, one, two, three. Come again to the second point. Where it's supposed to be, have it there. One, two, three. Do you need to count to three every time? No. But you're actually having the, the important of maintaining what you do is having control of the hair. You're aware of what you're cutting. You're aware of how you're going to snip snack the, the, the design. So this is very important. So you guys could like add this to your toolbox. Now back to this one. Okay. Uh, straight in here. Can you still, guys, can you guys still see? Write it in the chat box if you guys still can see. Thank you, Andrew. I'm like, I lowered it a bit, so I just wanted to be sure that everybody could see. So if you're enjoying this, I want you to share this. Share the love. Share the love. If you guys are enjoying this, just click share. You know, it will be fun for not just yourself. Share the love as we're sharing it with you. Now, I'm going to continue a pattern of diagonal forward sections. That means I'm coming here. I have this hair here, now I'm coming back. This piece of hair that I don't, uh, I'm not cutting. I'm isolating it. I'm going to push it back. Now, grab it. Uh, here we go. Take my comb underneath so I can actually see where I'm cutting. So this section is going backwards. It's going to increase a little length, but I'll show you the front trick very soon. How are you going to make this lovable? So again, I take my comb, push it backward. Now I have it here. I come in with my shear. So remember what I said, that last piece, you don't cut it, you bring it back in to make sure you have it where you want it. Again, bring it to where the point where you want. There we go. So see how it's falling, maintaining that shape. Come again. Do you have to do this in this particular order? Yes or no? You don't have to. You don't have to. Um, Imitate what I'm doing. You should emulate what I'm doing. What works for you? So I just came with this section. Now I'm going on the same angle. See, I left this piece. I haven't touched it yet. I came with the top angle with my blending shield. One, two, three. Come again to this side. One, two, three. Now comb it, shake it out. Love the way it's falling. Now, go back to my shear. Have that same section, repeat it. Diagonal forward, comb it back. Bring the hair that you're not going to want to cut. Pinch it out. And we'll continue repeating this movement along the way. So just to go a little bit faster, guys, I'm going to do this section and this section as fast as I can. Not too much explanation because I know you guys are watching and you guys got it. Okay. So, again, take my comb under here. I'm just going to go a little bit faster. Now, something that occurred to me at the moment while I was cutting is can uh, probably a question somebody might have. I'm coloring it bluntly. I'm coloring it solid. Do you want a point cut? Yes, you can. I think if you point cut, you create more blend. We get here. Can I point cut? Yes, I can. It will give more softness when the hair falls. So there we go. Now you jump back to our blending shear. What do we do? How many times I'm, I'm cutting this? Put Type it in the chat box. How many times I'm cutting it? And again. There we go. 
Now this, don't worry about this piece. Thank you. I love those threes. Now this, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you something with it. Okay, last section on the top from um, maybe my left side, maybe your left side, but somebody's left side is. Okay, back to my shear. Comb it through. Take that section. Comb goes in the bottom. See my section right there? I'm just going to have fun. and I'm going to point cut. Point cut it out. Second section. There we go. See my guideline. There we go. There we start. See, it's now popping out. Jorge, right, Christina and Allie are wondering, and do you always wet cut this or would you potentially dry cut this ever? Um, I could, uh, one of the things that I do enjoy is uh, I'm not a regular dry cutter. I do dry cut depending on the design, but sorry. One of the things that I really um, like to do is the base of the cut. I like to do it in wet and the rest of the cut or finalizing or personalizing the cut, I like to do it in dry. Why? This cut, um, certain sections, I like to go um, on wet. But then I'll just, as as I start ending up, I start doing um, dry cutting. Because I want to, if I want to enhance it, I think uh, you make the structure of the cut and then you start playing with that structure um, after you're done and it's dry and you have a better understanding of, of what you're actually doing at each moment. Uh, so that's one of the things I like to do. But it's like, let's just say it like this, 70% of the cut will be, 70% uh, of the cut will be wet, 30% of the cut will be dry. I hope that answered, hope we're good. Now let's finish this up. I wanna share a little bit more info with you guys. So now back again, let me take this out. Let me let this, let me get my shears go for a minute. Diagonal section, comb it back. This is the hair that I won't be cutting. Grab my seven inch dry cutting, bring it here. On this side, I'm gonna point cut again. Working a little bit faster for you guys. How many of you are anticipating doing this cut on Maybe tomorrow, maybe later in the day. Hit me in the chat. Let me see what you guys are doing. There we go. Snip. So if you're doing it later on, hit it in the chat. I want to see how many people will be doing this today or tomorrow. Comb it back, like I mentioned. Later this week. Cool. Absolutely. So got it here again. Point cutting, let me shift it a bit. There we go. Point cut, I love point cutting. Again. So this is what I'm going to do. Probably the end, the super end result after all the tweaking and, and everything. I want you guys to follow me on Instagram, Jorge Does Hair, and I'll post a picture of the end result. And I'll probably, Maybe I'll try to record myself while I'm styling so you guys see a better definition of the step-by-step. -step. There we go. Now we'll fall back into our blending shear. Huh. I have my blending shear here. Again, one, two, three. Let that piece go. Come back to the other one. Comb out what you're not cutting, what's in the way. One, two, three. There we go. See how that movement and that hair starts to fall and have that PC, that flowy feeling. I love that. Last section. Again, one, two, three. And you see how the shape is coming. I can flip it to the side. Now this little piece, <clears throat> this little piece right here, I like to trim it sometimes outward. So it could be like right there in the jawline. 
So she like puts it puts it behind her ear, like you see it. You just take her um, sideburn and just take it a little bit out. So you can put this piece behind the ear and it flips so beautifully and you start playing. Now let's make it more fun. I'm gonna lower the mannequin a bit. Hope you guys could see it. I'm just gonna dip her into this point right here. Now I'm flipping to my favorite, favorite new shear. My Sam Vila 14 tooth point cutting shear. This is my this is my baby. I don't know, I don't know you guys, but I know every each one of us has in their um toolbox like a shear that it no matter what you do, you go to it. So this would be mine. My Sam Vila 14 tooth point cutting shear. This is I wish I could say what I want to say, but this is my jam. So what I'm going to do is elevate the hair right here, as you can see it, come in, and I'm going to point cut. Create more texture to it. That gives it all that pieciness that I want. Elevate it, 45 degree angle, outward. So there's longer shear. So you come in, in with the shear, and you point cut. Shake it around. See how those pieces start flowing? And they're moving. There we go again. Point cut with a 14 tooth. Like I said in one of the other class, a guy that's really rocking this, these shears, these 14 tooth, he, he has like a whole bunch of ideas. Like his 14 tooth shear is in a whole another level game. Um, oh, <clears throat> I forgot his name. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> I forgot Roger's name. I couldn't believe that happened on live. Well, this is not. Things happen. Roger is really rocking it, and I really learned a lot from him. So you can see all the pieciness that's flowing into. Same thing you do on the opposite side. Here we go. Sorry for that, Roger. It's all his love. I do that sometimes too, man. It's like my <laughs> best friend on the planet, and all of a sudden I'm like, why can't I remember this person's name? <laughs> hey, I um, why question for you. Jen H is asking, would you do the front section with a feather razor? Okay. You want to see the feather razor? Would you? Okay. Let's show this to you. I'm going to let it go. Here it is. My Sam Vila razor. I'm shifting my body to the other side. I'm going to comb it out. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, here we go. Hope you guys can see this. Okay. Let me get, I think this way. It's going to be kind of uncomfortable because of my body position. Let me go with the, maybe this would work. Let me grab it as a pen and I'm gonna do it where the direction I want the pieces to go. So I'm gonna start doing it on a Y position here. And then my second cut would be here. My third cut would be here. My fourth cut would be here. That means I'm going from mid length. That means I have the whole length. I will go from the middle inward Second section, it's in a, probably in a comfortable position if I was standing in front on this side, right in front of my section. It would be easier for me to do, but uh, I want you guys to uh, enjoy it and probably see it better. So there we go. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and take my comb, release it out. And there we go have that still that pieciness and that flowiness. You can also, if you don't have any of those tools and you just have your cutting shear, let me comb this out. I did this once in a class ago. Uh, let me stand here. Take a section, like a square shaped section, and you could do it in different places. Let me comb this up, yeah. I hope you guys could see it. Now you're gonna go to the top and you're gonna tease, tease, tease. And when you tease it, you cut it. Comb it out. And see how those short hairs give that little body, but at the same time, they give it a little texture. Same thing you do, not close to the hairline, just but you can go right here 
comb that hairline out, protect it. Take the second square, comb it all up. I learned this from a very good friend. And like I said, tease, 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 tease. You got it, you go. Can you do point cutting to with it? Yes, you can. Do what you think will blend it in better for you. And as you can see, you can see all those flakiness and pieces. Now, one thing I really love about this is how do you style it? Okay, I am using one of my favorite products right here. You see it? J Force 22. I'm not going to like hit it hard or use a lot of product. I just want to create a little, some texture with it. Here's the back. Blend it in with my hands, and I'm just going to scrunch it in. Start scrunching it in. Start scrunching it in. Make that hair a little bit rough. Now, pre-style it. Like, where do you want? And this is, I'm in love doing this right now. Using my blow dryer with the diffuser. So I'm going to put it in the highest heat, but I'm going to use it on the medium setting. That means not in full blast but in medium blast. Well, I have it in medium blast. What happens if you if the hair is very fine and the hair is like too loose, what will happen if you put it in high heat, it will break away that texture that you're trying to create. But if you put it in a medium setting and you just get it a little bit close and you just circle it, that means I will be doing this one. The highest heat. What I do is you can see I lift it a slightly up just to create that slight a little bit of volume to it. And out of here. The styling product will help us just create that natural texture and that hole that we want, but at the same time. Give it that volume and that roughness that we want to add to it. Nowadays, people like something that looks kind of undone, but has a nice movement to it. That next day here. So if I lift it with the piece from the diffuser, what is going to happen is that you're going to be able to lift the hair. Now that what you uh, cut with the uh, with the technique. If you old back comb or you use the, a razor or you use a 14 to point cutting shear, what you do is make those hairs stand up and give them the hold so you can start molding it. And we're almost done today. How do you guys think about it? Let me see it in the chat. I haven't seen the chat in a while. So you create all this texture and you start manipulating. Wait, let me just grab it there. And you start manipulating, you start shaping it just the way you want it. I keep combing backwards. But as you can see, you can start hitting, you can hit a little spray to it. And you have a nice texture right there. What you do is just play with it and start molding it as your hands or your creativity takes you. I did it at the super speed version of it, <laughs> but I promise you guys, I'm gonna post it on Facebook. I promise, I promise, I promise. So probably like in an hour or so, I'll just finish it up, tweak it, teen it, and I will post it so you guys can see the end result. But for now, this is what we have today. Uh, I'm loving your comments. This comment box is, um, uh, the comment box, there's a lot of things saying, so I'm trying to read everything. But like I said, guys, this is so much fun to do with. Play, start using creative ways to style. I just 
like a couple of weeks ago, I started blow drying with the diffuser and it was so much fun popping out these natural textures. Yeah, I love that. And it does seem like people are starting to move towards that type of wash and wear type of hair. So this is a great way to, you know, not just jump out of the shower and head out wet, but to still get that kind of wash and wear sort of look from it. So exactly. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, great job, Jorge. And I think what's really brilliant about this too is you were adding the texture throughout the haircut. So there was so so much less you had to do in the refinement stage after it was blow dried. Because I think a lot of times we build these really strong, heavy, solid shapes, blow dry it out. And then we have all of this texturizing work to do afterwards. So I thought it was very cool too that you took the time in between the sections even to get out the blending shear and work with it, which maybe in the moment, some people watching might go, well, that takes a lot of time to switch shears, but when you're finished, you're finished. You don't have a bunch of reworking of the shape to do. So really- That's so true. And at the same time, you still have maintained the same control that you're working. So you have the section, you're not grabbing sections from other places. It might look like it's a lot, but Actually, I'm doing it in a slower rhythm because I'm teaching it. But when you're behind the chair, um, doing one, two, flipping back and forth, it's so much faster. But mm-hmm. it's like we're teaching it, and you go a little bit longer. But at the same time, have fun. Try to find, we're just like instruments of inspiration. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Jorge. Everyone, make sure you go check out Jorge. And like you said, he'll be posting more on his social. You can see that there on the screen there. And thank you, Jorge, so much for bringing this incredible education to all of us this morning.